Aonia friends, this is Miss Mihu with the Big Gardens Farm to School program. Today we are going to be talking all about pumpkins. So let's get pumped for pumpkins! Today we are going to learn three things. The first is where did pumpkins originate from? The second are all the different parts of the pumpkin from the outside to the inside. And then our third objective today is to make something with our pumpkin and learn different ways to eat. Let's get started. Let's look at some um, varieties of different types of pumpkins that all originate from the same place, which is Oaxaca, Mexico. And I'll show you my map here. So up here is the United States and the light blue. And then down here at the bottom, is Oaxaca, Mexico. It's in the southern tip of Mexico. And squash and pumpkins have evolved from this area as well as corn and beans and a couple other crops. So this little area of Mexico is a very special place when it comes to our indigenous foods and crops that are um, have grown and traveled throughout this land and this continent because each one of these pumpkins started from the same type of pumpkin. However, as it traveled north and south, it adapted to its climate and its bioregion, and it developed certain characteristics that made it thrive there. Let's start with a few pumpkin facts. So we said that all pumpkins come from Oaxaca, Mexico. Now the first recorded pumpkin seed was from 7,500 years ago. So all of these pumpkins are relative to that first seed that was found in Oaxaca. Pumpkins are members of the cucurbit family and they are related to things like gourds, cucumbers, squash, and watermelons. Pumpkins are what you would consider to be a winter squash, but it's close cousins, different types of gourds. There's summer squash too. So there's like things like acorn squash and butternut squash are some popular ones. But during the winter, the ones that take about 120 days are the winter squash. And that's what we're harvesting in October. The world record for the heaviest pumpkin was grown in 2016 in Belgium. And it weighs 2,000 624 pounds. That would be equivalent to your entire classroom of students bundled into one pumpkin. All right, friends, look, let's look at how a pumpkin grows. So when a pumpkin first starts, after it's grown its vines and it's spread out over its area, what happens is it grows these little blossoms. And most of the time they're bright yellow, kind of a goldenish yellow color. And what this allows to happen is pollination. And pollination is what facilitates the growing of the pumpkin. So they begin as flowers. And after they're pollinated, you can see that a little tiny pumpkin is growing there. Yet the blossom is still attached. So while that little pumpkin is growing, you still have all kinds of pollinators floating around and coming and getting nectar and things. Then as time goes on, you'll start to see the pumpkins and they'll come out like an almost yellow and then they'll eventually change to an orange. But when they first emerge, they're close together, they're bright yellow and as you can see, they still have their blossom on it. And after another week or two, of some good sun and some good water, you'll finally get the pumpkin. And these pumpkins here, they're called Little Jack pumpkins. And this is actually a Little Jack pumpkin. But as you can see, it went from the yellow tinge to the orange tinge when it's ripe. And you'll also notice that the bloom and the flower fell off and that they have these curly little vines coming out of them. And it's when these curly little vines turn brown that they're ready to harvest. And harvest is just a fancy way to say that they're ready to be picked. Okay, now let's cut open a pumpkin and see what the insides look now that we've seen how they've grown. So right here we have our New England pie pumpkin. 
And these, this is what you would consider to be a small to medium sized pumpkin. Um, it's very sweet and it is what we use to cook with. So if we want to make pumpkin treats that are sweet, like pumpkin pie, pumpkin cookies, things like that, this is the type of pumpkin we would use. Not the big ones that we make jack-o'-lanterns out of, but the small ones. So I've gone ahead and cut open our pie pumpkin and on the outside you see the skin which is thick and orange, almost red. On the inside right after the skin, this is the layer that we know to be the flesh. And then right in here we have what you call the pulp and the seeds. So this is the stuff, these are edible, which means that you can eat them, but you have to prepare them a little bit differently than you would the flesh of the pumpkin. And for our cooking demonstration today, we are going to be making pumpkin fries. And with the pumpkin fries, we'll only be using the flesh part. But I will also show you some examples of some roasted pumpkin seeds that you could try as well. Okay, let's make some pumpkin fries. I've never tried this recipe before, but it sounds delicious. It's Parmesan cheese with pumpkin fries and some coarse sea salt. So we start with our pie pumpkin. Even though we're making a savory treat instead of a sweet treat, uh, we're still going to use the same New England pie pumpkin. And we're going to start by, and of course I'm using a knife, so Anyone who wants to try this at home needs to have an adult with them. I'm going to take my pumpkin and lay it flat so it's not going to move on me. And I'm going to start cutting the skin off of the pumpkin. Okay, so now that we have all the skin off, this is the part if you want to save your seeds to make um, some roasted pumpkin seeds, this is where you'll separate the pumpkin seeds from the pulp. So I'm going to put as many pumpkin seeds as I can with the smallest amount of pulp possible <laughs> into my tiny bowl. And I'm going to come in here and use, I'm using a tablespoon to scoop this out of here. And this is much easier than having to reach into the pumpkin. It's not perfect, but as you can see, it's now hollow. Now this is where we make our fries. So I cut this flat on this side, so it would be okay to keep it this way. However, it would still be much easier to flip it. Okay, this is where you can get creative. How do you like your fries? Do you like wedges? Do you like skinny fries? Do you like fritters? So I'm just going to start chopping a couple good sized chunks off of here. And I think if I were to make this into a french fry, I'd like to cut it in half and then have little hook french fries like this. Once again, this is something that you need an adult to help you with, so you use proper knife technique. So now at this stage, what you need to do is place your fries in some cold water and then put them in the refrigerator for at least 30 minutes but the best way to do it is cut them the day before and let them sit in the refrigerator overnight. Okay, now that we have let our pumpkin fries, our pumpkin slices, chill in cold water for at least 30 minutes, um, we are going to take them out of the bowl and I am placing them 
on a paper towel. What I would like to do is dry them as much as I can because next step will be to put this in a Ziploc bag with cornstarch. And cornstarch is a light powder. So you want it to be as dry as possible. Okay, once I have them dried, I'm going to take a Ziploc bag. This is a gallon bag. And I'm going to place my dried pumpkin pieces in the bag. Okay, the next step is to add two teaspoons of cornstarch. So there's one, two. Then I'm going to close the bag and we're going to shake. After I've shaken the pumpkin slices with the cornstarch, I'm going to take a large bowl and pour the cornstarch slices into the bowl. At this point, I'm going to drizzle a little bit of olive oil, approximately two teaspoons. And I'm going to coat with my hands. Then I'm going to take two teaspoons of paprika. Paprika's got a real pretty um, burnt red color. It's got a very smoky flavor. So one, two. Next, I'm going to add one teaspoon of garlic powder. Just because it says one teaspoon, that does not mean you have to put that much spice into your fries. So if you like things just more on the simple side, just salty a little bit, then all you have to do is add salt if you really want to. All these extra things like paprika and garlic powder are all extras that just add flavor. Okay, here's what our mixed fries look like before they are baked. Next thing we do is take a small cookie sheet and some unbleached parchment paper. And we line our cookie sheet with the parchment paper. And the parchment paper just helps our fries not stick to the bottom of the pan and it also makes for a really easy cleanup. So we're going to do a single layer that means we don't want any of our pumpkin pieces to touch each other. So we want all of the pumpkin of each piece to be cooked thoroughly. So here is what our pumpkin pieces look like before they go in the oven. The oven is preheated to 425 and I'm going to place these in the oven for 15 minutes. All right, so while our pumpkin fries are cooking, let's look at what we can do with the seeds from the pumpkin. So here are the seeds that we saved from our New England pie pumpkin. Now you can do this with any pumpkin seeds. So it can be your jack-o'-lantern seeds, the one that you carve on Halloween. It can be a pie pumpkin, it can be any pumpkin. So I went to our local grocery store today and I found two different varieties of pumpkin seeds that they had pre-roasted. So I'm going to share those with you today. The first one here is a, what you would call a raw pumpkin seed. So it's basically going from this format to just roasting it in the oven and taking all the moisture out and just leaving the seed, but not adding any spice, not even salt. So that is what you consider raw. Here's what our raw roasted pumpkin seeds look like 
and here's what our raw straight from the pumpkin seeds look like. The shell has been taken off these particular seeds. So inside of this shell, you have the seed of the pumpkin, which when it's roasted, turns this pretty dark green color. Now another variety I found today at the grocery store was pumpkin seeds with spice. This one is a spicy pumpkin. And as you can see, it came out of the shell as well. But this one has a variety of spices. Let's see. Paprika, which is what we put in the pumpkin fries. A uh, little bit of chili powder, a little bit of garlic, a little bit of salt, and a little bit of cumin. Even though both of these pumpkin seeds were prepared out of their shell, you can make yours with the shell on because it is very hard to take <laughs> the shell off the seed because it is super slimy and slippery and it's near impossible. But if you really wanted to do without the shell, you could roast them with the shell, let them dry out, then you can come back in and individually take every shell off of it like you would eat a sunflower seed. It's the same sort of process. All right, we have just pulled our pumpkin fries out of the oven. As you can see, they're a nice golden brown. Some of my pieces were cut a little bit thicker than others, so some might be more crunchy than others. I'm gonna go ahead and take them off the cookie sheet and put them in a bowl. And then the next thing we're going to do is take a little bit of Parmesan and sprinkle. And Parmesan is a cheese, obviously, and some people like a lot of cheese, somebody like, some people like just a little bit of cheese. I, for one, can have a whole lot of cheese and a whole lot of Parmesan. And then, of course, a little bit of salt. People call this a dash of salt. And then you just kind of shake it around all right, friends, so after your fries have cooled, it's time to taste test. Yep. That's good. Go make yourself some pumpkin fries. I'm on to something. Thank you, friends, for joining me today to learn all about pumpkins. We talked about a variety of different pumpkins where they come from, which is Oaxaca, Mexico, and we talked about different ways to prepare and eat pumpkin. We first made our pumpkin fries with Parmesan cheese, which were delicious. And then we talked about a few different ways to roast your pumpkin seeds. So what I would like you to do is next time there's a pumpkin in your house, whether it's for cooking or whether it's you carving a jack-o'-lantern, I'd like you to save those seeds and one, roast your seeds and come up with your own recipe and your own spices to put on the seeds and two i want you to save about five seeds for next year and next year around springtime take those five seeds and go take them out in an area outside of your house or wherever you live that there's plenty of space to grow because pumpkins take up a lot of space so plant those seeds about two feet apart and see what happens. Thanks for being here today. A big thank you from the big garden and we'll see you next time.